that's why. Anyway, today's the day. It's the last episode of this Let's Play. As you can see, I put in a lot of work last night. Not only have they gotten their next attack multipliers from standard leveling, but they also got them from leveling up my job 16 times. That's all of them. Wheezy, easy, breezy, and drizzy, baby. Might as well cop all of this. I'm not going to cop every treasure this time around, just because some of it is shit that I don't need. But on this floor, I don't know what the treasures are, so I'm going to get them anyway. But this just makes grinding so much more enjoyable. I can just rip through the enemies. Damn, this is getting type annoying. Hold up. My younger bro tried out these headphones and he agreed with me. They are way too damn heavy. It doesn't feel like it's weighing me down, it's just that it keeps falling off my head. Like, I really gotta put this thing snugly in. In fact, I wish I could just zip it around my head or do something. You know what, I'm gonna have to invest $2,000 in some leaky ass Beats headphones, which I can't even use to listen to anything dirty. Just because that's probably going to be the only way I can sufficiently. Oh, that got me shook for a second, even though I have softs. So I can do these kinds of recordings without this shit falling off my head and wasting time. Like, I can't vibe with that. That's not wavy. Oh, I just realized, this is like a back encounter. That's how out of it I am with these new jobs. These new jobs have it so that I don't even care. Go ahead. Throw, throw anything you want at me. I'm not even paying attention to what's happening on the screen anymore. I do wish that... Calm your ass down. I do wish that Breezy had a little bit more HP, just because everyone is so close to 5,000, if not above it. Yeezy has a lot of HP because of his role as a fighter for such a long time. Not a fighter, a monk and a karateka. But these guys are good for grind grinding, like, if you're trying to get to level 99, these are the guys that are get going to get you to level 99. Because you don't have to kill them. They do have nasty ass spells though, so you gotta watch out for that. That much I can ascertain. So far, oh yeah, I'm starting to see the secret passageways. The walkthrough said I would know when I'd see it, so that's kind of cool. But thankfully, even though today was a drizzly day, it wasn't pouring out in rain, so... Suffice to say, I can't wait until I finish this OP, because I'm worried I might get hit with pneumonia after yesterday's ass-beating.
quite sense. Eh, it's nothing really too interesting. I might as well showcase this dungeon. In the previous days, when I was just thinking about how to finish up this LP, I didn't know whether to show you this dungeon or not, because I didn't have an idea on how it looked. Like, I saw an LP of this game to this point from H.C. Bailey, but that was in early 2015, late 2014, when I was bigly into H.C. Bailey. For losing my laptop and shit. HC Bailey was my G. Like, that guy's invited to the barbecue. I don't care what nobody says. As if, like. I'm not black and I'm not Mexican, I'm Dominican. Do we have barbecues? Like, I've been to one. I've been to a couple, actually. It's just not my kind of thing. In fact, uh, I remember looking really girly one time. Uh, we were in a group project and in order to test out like which group is best for me I'm such a lame that I got in a group with a bunch of girls because none of the homies wanted to be with me around that time so only the girls were begrudgingly forced to take me in oh we did a quiz to test group affinity after that and one of the questions was uh, what would you prefer a barbecue or a like nice fancy dinner out and I chose fancy dinner out but these ladies again they're from the Bronx they're not the girliest of girls so good looking just they're extroverted they're, they're one of the boys are cool which is what I can say about myself at the time I chose that. They chose the barbecue outside in the summer. That made me look super lame. Musical taste, favorite basketball players, and all this other stuff got factored in. And let's just say I'm the most different guy at that squad at the time. Nowadays, I can adapt to different people a lot better. Much better, actually. I was worried about this, so let's see. Six key. This is why you gotta fight Dorga and Une, not just for the optional dungeon key, but to straight up just get out of there. So I like that. They give you the opportunity to fight Titan first to get some of the better jobs, and then you can fight Dorga and Une. Probably would have been smarter for me to do too. Just upgrade Breezy and Drizzy. <laughs> I was so not eloquent when describing them. That's what I'm talking about. I like that. Give me the elixir. This guy is real. Like, he is taking these hits. 
Of course, she got petrified to death, but... That ain't nothing but a thing. Oh wow, now I look lame. But you know, in some positive news, I got a lot of elixirs. That's not something I would use on Breezy or Drizzy. Well, actually, that is what I would use on Brizzy and Drizzy. But that's not something I would use for Wheezy and Neezy. Since they don't really have spell charges to fully benefit from that. That's like if you need your magic users to refuel. And I have not used one. I've been really judicious about them. As opposed to my Phoenix Downs. I like how this game introduces these kinds of items for the most part, but it doesn't abuse them. Unlike Final Fantasy XV, where I want to bash the game, but them shits, you, you get that on the reg. Although a lot of people complain that the items can be expensive to get at first. Those are some nasty enemies if you think about it. Imagine fighting them without these classes. It would probably be hell on earth. Oh, these guys are nasty. I remember that. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me give you the treatment right now. Since you want to make things, since you want to be stubborn, <laughs> let me give you the treatment. <sighs> Woo, I love using that now. But that's one thing I'm glad about in terms of being a Manhattan dude who ended up going to high school with people from the Bronx. I didn't notice, but I kind of had an elitist attitude at the time just because I was like an annoying anime dude who didn't do anything to try to relate to other people. And it got me a lot of issues in high school, not middle school. So when I got to high school, we kind of had like an elitist edge who just keeps myself. But I learned a lot of things from just trying to be like other people. Try to understand them, get into what they're into and shit. Oh, these guys are problems. Yo, yo, Breezy. Yeah, enjoy some of that, like, EXP that you can have amongst yourselves. I don't have life, too, because, eh, I don't really see the point of it. Oh, there's one enemy that can one-shot you, but I really just don't see the point of that. Oh, as long as I'm here... I should probably have a lot more softs. Okay, I'm not even gonna bother getting that. Unless it's like 99 softs, who cares? I'll be back, so. 
Enjoy the commercial break. And I'm back. Just had to get my phone real quick. I don't even care about a lot of these chess TBH game. Yo. Kill him. These guys are fucking up my vibe. Yo, hurry up. Hurry the fuck up. Ah, <sighs> fucking hate Breezy right now. I'm starting to side with the hoes that were mad at you for making the song loyal. That's how mad I am at you right now. God, getting my heart to stop all that those times. Ah, <sighs> soft. Drake is, essentially. Where's the life spell? Here. Yeah, I'm just gonna spam bomb. Cause I got elixirs. But I should probably have save states in case I gotta deal with those ghost things. Cause they really are annoying. I could have stopped by at that optional dungeon to get more shurikens. At the moment I have 21. I didn't show you in the LP, but at that final room there was, in the Eureka dungeon, there was a hidden store if you go to the top of that room, the little alcove, hit the confirm button, secret passageway opens up in typical Final Fantasy 3 and 4 fashion, you walk through, there's a guy selling shurikens, dressed just like the other guys, I can get some. I got 18 out of him. But 21 because of the three in the chest. And they're going to be very useful. I like their designs. <sighs> I was lucky today. Today... My boss still wasn't here. Turns out that his girl is like pregnant for their second child together. And that gave me enough time not to deal with him for another day to get off at work at five instead of six. Which actually makes more sense in my job for me to get off at five since one of the things that I have to do is something that closes at 5, so leaving at 6 means I'm being held up until my boss is satisfied with me. Go ahead, dual wield. Should have had that a while ago, but whatever. Yeah. 
You know, it feels good to spam magic in a video game based TRPG again. The spell charge system actually seems broken towards the later parts of a game now I think about it. In early game it makes it more judicious and costly than the standard MP system. But after that it's perfect. Because I can use this stuff 20 times and then I can use the quake spell if I'm done with that like 30 times. And I got options. That looked like a perfect boss sprite, but it's never used for a boss, so I don't know what's up with that. So yeah, I'm back on third, the third floor again, but it's nothing to worry about at the moment. The walkthrough mentions something like this happening. We're at the other side of it. Hmm. Wavy? Who leveled up? Wheezy? A. Oh no, everybody's leveled up except for. Hold up. Drizzy? So how did Breezy get ahead of Drizzy? Oh, because he got. Yeah, that makes sense. The dynamic started to change a little bit in this because of this engine. <sighs> so that means the first half of my week was easy aside from the crazy rain. The second half of my week? Oh no, now I think about it. My boss might come back Friday, so I might have another easy day on me. That's wonderful. And here's the thing, I liked working. I like uh, working not just because I like getting money, but because if I work hard, my homies work less hard. They're less encumbered because of me. Especially if I'm working at a place that's understaffed and small as it is. And then me working hard means that everyone else has their life easier. But after leaving at 6, I'm thinking, man, I'm not working a part-time job anymore. I'm working a full-time job with a margin of error. Or a full-time job where I don't close up shop. At that point, I might have to ask, like, yo, raise my shift. I like the fact that I'm working beyond just my standard job description. That's some wavy stuff. Like it's stuff that I'm good at because it's computer related, it's writing related, search engine optimization, inventory work. Taking trips to post office every now and then to drop off packages. You no know, wavy stuff. 
Because I do like going on walks. Even when I was in need, I'm probably the only person who's been in need for three years and didn't get fat out of it. Because I do enjoy going out on walks. I like uh, expanding my horizons. Sightseeing. I'm, I'm a photographer on the low. You can check my Instagram. Like I've had a friend who told me that he was in need around the time I was in need too. Except he was doing it for like six months. He was just on his laptop with a blanket covering his head so no one would see his shame. And he did gain weight because the only time he went out was to go to the next door corner store. Which is crazy to think now to know about it because I went to his corner store too but we never really bumped into each other all that much. Although I have gone to another corner store and I would bump into my dad. My dad at the time was kind of dumb with it. He didn't really know my personality too well. He tried to call me whenever he would see me from across the street. When he should have, you know, you know, on the cell phone, but I didn't have my cell phone with me. And he would do everything but just get in my face and say, hey, what's up? That's one thing I notice a lot of people do. They'll do everything to try to talk to me except say hi. Which is the most convenient way of communicating with me because... I don't necessarily always have tech on me unless I'm going to work. And I'm not who I used to be on the DMs. I used to enjoy talking to people on instant messaging. That shit's annoying to me now. Speaking of which, I noticed some of y'all be hitting me up on Facebook now. Just to send me good wishes, tell me, yo, I love your autistes. I like that. Keep doing that every now and then. Because I do like to check every now and then when I see a notification once a month and just say, I, here's my response. YouTube, I didn't know that YouTube, I still don't fully understand YouTube messaging, so I probably have like 25 DMs right now of people like mad at me because I haven't responded. But again, YouTube's messaging system downgraded. You gotta go through all these hoops just to get to your messages. Like, why couldn't they have it so you would see the message from your plus one notifications? That would be very convenient. So they have it so I gotta go through all these hoops and shit. It's very upsetting. I've been a critic of many of YouTube's changes over time, especially in 2013. Especially in 2013. I'm old school baby, so it makes sense that I would be very critical of some of these things. Like, I don't vibe with them. Now, this is the crystal armor. I'm not going to get this. Oh, but I like how everyone's HP is looking now. Even Breezy, he might as well be 5,000. Just with a margin of error.
Okay, and just keep going. Damn. So, that's pretty good. Okay, I ain't even gonna waste time. <laughs> this system is broken now. So I know what's up. Ignore that shit. This is a very suspicious looking room. I had a dream just like this back in 2006. It's too bad you don't actually fight these five dragons, by the way. Yo, chill with the vulgarity. Watch your profanity. Control your vocabulary. Says the guy whose closing line is always suck my dick or suck my dick in pig Latin. <sighs> Mrs. Down the fuck. Is she leveled enough that she can take these dragons on? Well, I like Sid, so cool. Plot twist? So the dragoon is back. Man, I love this guy. Even though he can be a little annoying. And he just reminds us constantly of how useless background characters are. Support party members. Imagine if you had one in this dungeon. I had to hit the confirm button for that one. So the whole squad, or just like, they're just one unit. Five, the four of them make one heart of like. You guys are gonna die fighting those dragons, you know that? The only one who looks like he might have a chance is Dash. And he's probably not the one too good. <sighs> as usual, I can fuck around as much as I want until I talk to this guy. That's all you say? Zod, I have been waiting for you for a very long time. Try to say more. It's like the Emperor from Final Fantasy 2. So even he gets more lines. Okay, so he has a fixed pattern. He'll do Libra, then he'll wreck your shit, and then he'll use Libra again. And then he'll wreck your shit again. Let's 
So this feels very luck-based and intense, regardless of what level you are, unless you're at an absurd level, which I'm not. Okay. I could spam elixirs right now, but I'm not going to. Well, there you go. That's your fake final boss. A fake final boss so invisible that he isn't even used in the city yet. They use the whack real final boss cloud of darkness for that one. Which I don't, I don't mind because they want to suck the shit out of their toes, but come on. Zond is a real mean antagonist. Look at you being the 90s version of Kuja. Oh, that's a really cool image of her. Just wrapped in a cloak. Oh, so you're like the 90s version of Zemnis? Nothingness is eternal. Before that got retconned. So. Obviously those tentacles are. That's not even the tentacles. That's like the eel thing. They're covering your nips. This is a cloud of darkness. As she is right now. She will block. 32 hits, she has 255 defense, and 65,000 hit points. So, suffice to say, she's impossible to defeat. So this battle is scripted as fuck, and she only has one move. You know, I'm really regretting starting recording now, because after consuming what I just consumed, I really feel like going to the bathroom. I feel like taking a big ass crap. Yeah, we got fucked up. This guy walks in so casually at our corpses. Everyone does. Uh, let's get ready to be motivational. Although, you know, they're limited animations, so they can, like, show them, like, taking flight. And we don't even have a dash feature in this game. Not that we really need it, unlike Final Fantasy 2, where standard walking is just so awful so welcome to the real reason why no one ever beats this game hmm so do we get all, all our charges back yep we get all our charges back I could have talked with them, and that would have been much better for LP purposes. Especially since I like the way some of these characters are characterized. But, regardless, this is the real reason why a lot of people hate this game. If I walk up there, I'll fight the final boss. But unless I weaken her, the same exact thing will happen. I'll die. So I gotta go to these other places to nerf the shit out of her and fight like other bosses. Also, that's right, I'm gonna use save stays in the beginning because there's no way to escape, no way to save with the standard saving feature and yeah, if I die, I start all over from the beginning, which is a good thing if you're playing this on an NES. Because if you were to save right now 
and you're somehow underprepared and you get creamed and you're not that's your only safe out there's no way of you preparing yourself for victory you're screwed then that's a wasted safe file and that's a wasted playthrough it's impossible for you to win it's impossible for you to get out you are fucked and that's one problem I have with the Dawn of Souls version of Final Fantasies 1 and 2 on the Game Boy Advance. The encounters here can also be pretty nasty. I've never seen that move before, but okay, whatever. <sighs> So I'm just going to use safe states because obviously, in my mind, your intentions when having it like that were positive. So I'm just going to double down on the positive since I'm Mr. Efficiency. Pff, no, I'm not. H.C. Bailey is Mr. Efficiency. He'll play a game six times before LPing it, use 500 walkthroughs, ask his homies for formulas. So when he plays it, that's the optimal playthrough. It's casual, but it's optimal. So I'm already not sure of where to go. Let's see. Okay, I am going the right way. Let's hold along. Oh no, now I'm not gonna lose. Hold up. I like his name, at the very least. Okay, we're gonna fight a boss. Okay, and just like that, we got a ribbon. So I'm gonna clip it on 59, 63. Okay, and obviously ribbon has properties that can protect you from status ailments. And also, in these earlier Final Fantasies, reduce elemental damage okay
But this... Dungeon was probably a big pain in the ass when people were trying to get to it old school. Not just NES, but like not knowing the damage formula, which is really making it much easier on me. I like that. I doubly like that. Okay, any preparations? Let me check. Some stuff that can benefit me. Yep, I'm pussy, I don't care. You know, once you get the optimal jobs, there isn't really anything interesting in terms of strategy you can do. This really is a game about optimization. Especially these bosses, like the final boss, there is a really optimal way of defeating her, but it involves getting rare items from rare enemy encounters and switching to the Onion Knight to get those Onion Knight weapons. And the bosses, you have to, the regular enemies, you have to fight to get them. It's not only just a rare item, but they have beefier sets than a lot of these monsters and these bosses are a difficulty spike so that's crazy but I remember fighting you guys from Final Fantasy Dawn of Souls. That's actually a Earth Dungeon after you defeat Lich. So this guy's a warrior of dark from the dark world. Near light and dark is less Star Warsy and more yin and yang, which I think is really cool. Okay, is there like a better way out of here? Or do I gotta backtrack normally? Okay, well, that's kind of cold-blooded.
it just makes me dip normally. This whole final dungeon setup reminds me of Romancing Saga 3 in many ways. Look. Except you have to do it this way. Also, the Xeno Gears. Like, could you imagine if you can actually take down Cloud of Darkness without having to do all this work? And it would get you a slightly different ending and bragging rights and all this other cool stuff. Now my headphones are starting to become rebellious. Uh, Man, the way my walkthrough has this thing scaled is way different than me. Actually, I'm curious, how good is the AoE healing? So 500, not great. So they all have this weird tanking spell. Time to dip. <sighs> nice. Okay, so I gotta go south, southwest, southeast. This final dungeon has like a nice like arpeggio. I don't know if it's guitar or piano. Uh, that downward arpeggio definitely gives me a piano vibe. So 
take the fourth one. Oh, these guys look intimidating, but they ain't shit. Okay. Imagine if you can drain spell charges somehow. That would be crazy. Although I must say, the spell charges system makes a lot of this menu inventory stuff and interface stuff look really clean. The watcher is going to have to specify what it meant by fourth. That's probably another ribbon, but I don't really want to give that to my ninjas. I'm going to keep at it with this, because I don't trust this game. So obviously that's probably for the fifth Chris, from the fifth uh, door back there. If I get that, it's going to be a ribbon. I'm going to be faced with the same mini boss. But again, I prefer the helmets I have on my dudes regularly, even if it might not be efficient for elemental damage. So I ain't gonna waste my time with that. You see, that was very good for breezy and drizzy. That's the damage I want to see. That was crazy. I like that. I thought that would be the coup de grace. And I was pleasantly correct. Could you imagine forgetting to actually approach a crystal and talk to it after fighting the bosses? And you do this four times and the boss is still OP as shit. You see, they try to make the storyline a little more interesting this time around. To work around the fact that they couldn't have the characterization of Final Fantasy 2. Thing is, with Final Fantasy 2, 
They were obviously trying to make a more story driven game, however the technological limitations were far too cumbersome for it to work, so they decided to hit a nice middle ground here with an interesting lore and a simple story with neat characters. It wasn't until 4, definitely 6, 7, all the way to 10 that they actually started trying because nothing was impeding on them anymore. I mean, 4 was definitely pretty good at it, same with 5. There were still like limitations in the technology. Like, 6 really pushed the 16 bit technology to another level. Not as much as Star Ocean and Tales of, though. So the next one is pretty nasty. So where do I go to get to him? There's like a hidden passageway around here, but yeah. I think there's multiple around here. All that damage is petrification that gets him out. I kind of dig that. I'm feeling that. So with the next one, I'm not sure what to expect. After reading the walker, this guy gonna be nasty with it, or I don't know.
Okay, well, first off. Options, freeze, okay, three, empty, three. All right, mom, this guy looks nasty. Let's see if he is nasty. So now I kind of see where Final Fantasy 1 got it in a way. Because I always felt something was off about the Souls of Darkness dungeons. It's trying to be the Dark World counterpart of that game. Or this game, actually. So how does Meteor work? Yep, that's really nasty with it. Actually, I don't even know how I'm going to deal with this one. Hopefully that's not his only move. Phew. Well, I wasn't really satisfied with that damage. But as long as he doesn't do Meteor again... Boy. Hopefully they're get a little more turns ahead of him. That's unfortunate on Yeezy's part. So he's nasty with it. Okay, Phoenix down on you. Still want to be as economic as possible. <sighs> Damn. So I wonder what the dark world looks like in this game. Well, this is the dark world, but I doubt it's just this. Unless the Cloud of Darkness really effed it up. Let's 
So far, that's probably the nastiest boss I've fought here. I'm trying to think why he was so nasty. I mean, he has spells that do a lot of damage. And he does it a lot. But also the fact that he has a lot of HP, too. And that you're not really at the position where you can cheese him just yet. And with Cloud of Darkness, there's a definite way of cheesing her. Even in my case right now. With him, you still got like a couple bosses left in the tank. Like, slow down. Like a petrification clapping. There's two people who can petrify with swings, and this game is a nasty combo. And the next boss is nasty too. We still got one more before the final boss. I'm trying to remember because I got a little bit of anxiety kicking in. If I actually, yeah, I did speak to the crystal because I said all the other stuff. Got that dark warrior out. Way there. But yeah, Aramon makes Zon look whack. Because Zon was wasting his time with Libra, and this guy is just putting in work. He does waste his time with other spells, but those spells can do a lot of damage to you too, unless you got four ribbons on you, which I could have gotten ribbons. But I don't want to deal with the equipping and unequipping stuff, like, chill. Petrification is always nice to have on your side. And we are level 59 for everyone except for Drizzy. And Drizzy is usually not too far behind. He's not too far behind. Let's see. So what does the guide say about this engine? This room, actually.
Oh, this. This is gonna be the real one. Supposedly, this guy hits like a truck. And you know what that means? Watch out, Yuzi. It'd be nice if Case could get casted on them before these things go off. So for this one, I might have to have him in the back row just throwing swords. Especially if that's all, like, that was it? That was whack. Oh, this guy doesn't have as much HP. I hope one of them misses. Or one of them can tank it. Okay, let's see. Behind it, of course. One guy said that like bosses in turn based games aren't hard because you can always use Phoenix sounds if they're there. Unless the enemy can like wipe you out. Obviously never played this game. Actually he did. I should have brought back Breezy. See, this was where I could have gotten fucked up. FG4. You see, like, now I'm looking like a scrub. This is where the gloves come off. Shuriken, shuriken, okay, 
Like, this guy is difficult, like, you will probably have to cheese him. Sorry. Okay, so there's no throw command, is there? That was like a poor dice roll on the Bahamut. That's what I want to see. Okay, where's the shuriken? Do it again. Fight. Oh, but he never beat this dungeon, so I guess that's probably the big explanation as to why he would say that. See, this guy is hard. I had to cheese him. Like, I would have had to go all the way up that tower, defeat Zond, defeat the other two people. For a boss who I could have readily spanked just like that. Actually, I'm curious, how much would the shurikens affect my stats? Okay, so that's why they can be as useful as they are. Scalibur. Break. Ragnarok. Defender. Saved myself a lot of trouble by doing it like that. And you know it. I forgot to put them in the front row. Although, now that I think about it, how would you defeat him on a casual playthrough? You would probably have to do what I just did. No, I think I, can, I know a way I could have cheesed him ordinarily. <clears throat> See, what I could have done is I could have switched them all to... I could have gave them all... Bahamut off of that place that was selling Bahamut 
switched them all to summon users, put them all in the back row, gave them elixirs so that they would switch to magic users and then have spell charges after that. And then I would spam bond it. In fact, that would probably be a very creative way of defeating him. It would mean I would have to use some means that I would normally not. Oh, but I don't have as much magic attack multipliers because I'll be switching to an unfamiliar job. So that wouldn't be as effective as I thought. Still, like, that is a crazy boss battle. Okay, magic. Magic not equip. I overshot that. Since we're ready to end this in a few. So with that guy, use shurikens. Man up. Buy enough so you can use it on both uh, Cloud of Darkness and this dude. Oh, oh, do not attack. I don't want to waste them on these guys. Um, get there. No, no. There you go. <clears throat> I get there. I'm going to resort to Walker. Not that I've ever had qualms with doing that. Oh, even he says just figure it out for yourself, so I guess I'll have to figure it out for myself. Cool. Mm. 
the set. Not that hard my ass. You got me going through the another wrong turn. No, no, no. Okay, just to summarize how I feel right now, after dealing with all that. I'm not trying to be as succinct as I can be. It's not... Put too much words into that, you can look... If you're an English speaker, you know what I mean. With all those acronyms. Let's see if I didn't F up. They both but wheezy as it's shurikens easy as it's shurikens no time like the present let's go so that's why so at this point, she's nerfed into how she'd actually be if we fought her back then. The reason she was so strong before was because she had some plot armor. But now they're suppressing that plot armor so we fight her at her normal strength. And I like this final boss scene, by the way. Okay, haste. I don't know if haste works. Oh, but now they do it first. That's actually very convenient. Well, at least that point. Ooh, okay, so it probably did have an effect. Come on, that can't be your only attack. Okay, now I gotta do some more inventory management. Shuriken. Item. I could have bought some more shurikens and... That probably would have made this boss gauntlet into a complete cakewalk, but... I mean, look at my guys. They can go through some more of this abuse without really facing the consequences. It sure is feeling like Skyrim with all this inventory management I gotta deal with just to fight these guys. Just to fight her in particular.
Okay, the damage variance is tearing me apart right now. So do I risk it all, or do I make this a popping elixir? Sure. Hmm. No, I'm the type of guy who likes to risk it all, so... Really, I'd only die at this point from a worse, worst case scenario. And certainly not from this turn. I don't think anyone can die from this turn. Okay. That was semi decent. Oh, this final boss death thing that Final Fantasy used to do is so satisfying. Two thunderclaps with flashing lights and then just fading out frame by frame like that. Pixel by pixel, actually. Like they disintegrate to death. It's like throwing someone into a pool of super acidic water and just watching their particles fade into nothingness. That's pretty dark. And here's another Genesis type credits. I wonder when this stopped being a thing in Final Fantasies. I know one had it, two had it, four, it's stuck in my head. Yeah, five had this too. I know 6 definitely didn't have it. 7 had a similar thing where after the credits and the post credits cutscene you saw this sort of space thing where it looks like you're blasting off into the cosmos. Actually why do the Final Fantasy games have this cosmos thing? I guess he doesn't have to worry about monsters anymore, so it's gonna be an easy trick back. Trick, not trick. I still gotta hit the confirm button. I better not have to continue doing this. I hate it when endings of video games have you continue to hit the confirm button. Unless there's some post credits things, then that's perfectly okay. And I gotta pilot the airship back, like, y'all don't let me rest? Why not Sid? Sid should know how to do this shit better than I do. I'm dead giving them a free trip back home, and I'm escorting them off. Okay, so not all four of them got warped. Okay, so this blends them into the credo that they're the four heroes of light. It would be funny if they were the four heroes of light from Final Fantasy 1, just old and they like boys now. 
and not in the bishy way, the shonen. Alright, so have fun with your no daddy. That's where you king now. <sighs> oh, now I'm using the other ship, airship because it's faster, probably. King. Okay, so now he's gonna interact with her again so she's not thinking he's dead. He can go back to manhoeing and tricking these hoes. So he calls his bae granny, or is he a grandpa with a grandma? Are you sure you don't have any responsibilities anymore? Like, are you sure you don't have to jump into that fire, or is it good now? Hey, stop changing your damn palette all the time, Dash. <laughs> Dash she says shut the fuck up. That's so funny. But you know me, I'm allergic to cuffing. Okay. Don't be so dull. I remember in choir class, I had to actually sing that for practice every single day. Oh, so she wants... So he thought for a second she wanted a D. He got shy for a sec. But all four of their Ds? Why would you be blushing over that? You should be like, hell yeah. Oh, cocky with no shyness. Unless she's only talking about one of them. wonder which one. It's not easy. It's definitely not wheezy no more. People don't like him no more. People don't like breezy anymore after... He made that loyal song. So probably Drizzy. They still deride him even though he has ghost writers and still manages to be a plagiarist, taking other people's styles and flows. Uh, I like him too. I like them all. You see I'm role playing hard. To them, I really do have a party of Lil Wayne, Kanye West, uh, who else? Chris Brown, and Drake. So she's mad that the dancer kissed me, like, or my squad. Like, I'm role playing as myself. So who do I think I am? Lil Wayne, Drake. Chris Brown, Kanye, I'm definitely arrogant like Kanye. I'm definitely neurologically stoned out of my mind like Wheezy. Definitely moody like Drake. And Put my hands on motherfucker like Chris Brown. <laughs> I'm goofy like his ass. Now I think about it. Yeah, I'm a goofy dude, so I guess I'm like Chris Brown. Oh, but this looks like something from a Western RPG. Like a PC Ultima game. I don't know, this is the opening thing. I wish it was arranged like this when you actually start it up. Because I hate booting up this game, the opening thing 
They were so obnoxious. That's one thing I like about Final Fantasy V a lot. That started that whole, don't start it with the opening thing. Before Final Fantasy VII brought it back. And there it was arranged pleasantly. Probably the best arrangement since later on in twelve. Till later on in 12, I mean, just 12 happens after 7. Yeah, it showed him gang signs. Yeah, you'll pop on someone breezy, we know that. I've seen uh, Ashton Kutcher's punk when you got pranked. So if they had battle sprites, this is what it looked like. Could you imagine if people back in day one a remake of three, where they look like the battle sprites? That's how I see people who mod Final Fantasy VII looking like. That's what I think about them. This is equivalent of what you want. This is what you think is attractive. And this aesthetic all the time. So I guess I should soapbox box on what I think about the game. Kenji Tarada, he was the writer for the first three games. Obviously, going into it, a lot of people tell me, you know, 5 is better. I know in many ways 5 is better, but this one really puts the battle system to its deepest limit before it pushes it to its limit, more so than 1 and 2, before games like 4 and 5 expanded on the battle system of typical Final Fantasy games and made it more interesting. Like, compared to the final boss in this game who only has one move because that's probably the most hard ass thing she could do to the boss in Final Fantasy 4, that final boss. That final boss had you doing crazy shit. The final boss in 5, which is a similar game with a similar battle system, I had more difficult times with him than the super boss. And I know people be in that game multiple times without ever defeating the super boss. Because there's so much crazy shit you can do and there's so much crazy shit that final boss does. The remake of this game does so much to try to expand on that final boss. But this game is a grind. But it's a deep grind. It's a rewarding grind. Grind. It has me researching how to get these multipliers, um, one to grind, one not to grind, in a logical way. So it's better than Dragon Quest One and Two in that regard, because those games are just the grinding is the game. Here it's a little more than that. I'm trying to optimize when I grind, not just get strong enough to defeat the boss. Look at the multipliers needed to do it as efficiently as I can. Well, you know, I'm glad I'm done with that game. I'm glad I'm done with this game. And that means I've beaten Final Fantasies 1 all the way through 10. So when I say the games I've beaten, I can have a lot, an easier time, like, explaining, this is what I've done, this is what I've begun to do. And I really like playing this. I wouldn't be playing it if I didn't. This has been your boy, Mr. Marker 7. And let's say I'm a I gotta edit 21 videos now.